RBGFM, locals talking to locals. And on the telephone line, I've got the Minister of Civil Defence. It's Chris Farfoy. Kia ora, Chris. Kia ora, Nigel. How are you? I'm well. I suppose you've got one eye on the screen and one eye on the weather forecast <laughs> that's uh, been floating around. Um, I suppose a bit of uh, action needed by you to make sure everything's in place. Yeah, look, we've been keeping in touch with the mayors um, who, of the areas that we think are going to be affected. Unfortunately, it's those um, similar areas from uh, that got a bit of a hiding a couple of weeks ago with Cyclone Fehi. So we're talking um, Westland, um, top of the South Island, um, Tasman and Nelson, um, and obviously here in Wellington, I don't think we're going to um, uh, you know, escape uh, some weather over the next uh, two or three days. So I guess the, the, the message is, and I'm sure people have heard it um, through the news bulletins, is just to be prepared, um, you know, hope for the best, um, but expect the worst. So just the basic um, messages that we would do any time, actually, uh, regardless of any um, extreme weather warning, is to make sure that you've got a plan if, um, if the weather to go out or whether if you'd have to leave home. Um, medications, um, any supplies you need, water, uh, and uh, I, I guess also communications, having a plan with your family um, if, if the power goes out to make sure that you can get a hold of each other. Yes, that's right. We may just get the side whip of it, mightn't we, through uh, Kapiti Coast here and down to Wellington, but as you say, South Island might cop it badly, so power yeah. outages is the biggest problem, isn't it? Yeah, and I think um, I think you have to, we had a storm probably about uh, three or four years ago that was um, uh, knocked some power out um, to the Wellington region. Um, trees coming down on top of lines, so um, uh, you know um, we're talking very closely with uh, Niwa and the Met Service um, to get an understanding of um, what it will be like as it gets closer. Mm. Um, but again, I think people just need to be mindful that there's probably going to be some wind and some uh, rain over the next few days and just to uh, be prepared for that. If you've got things outside that might go flying, um, best use the good weather today as the sun is out um, to put it inside and make sure that uh, you're safe and that your neighbours are safe from the likes of flying trampolines or bins like that, something, anything like that. Right. What's the latest update on where it is at the moment, uh, Chris? Anything come in from the Met Service? Oh, I think we'll, we'll start to um, see um, the, um, you know, the, the beginning of it um, overnight tonight. So okay. we really kind of think that um, uh, Tuesday uh, morning and uh, the day and evening of Tuesday we will we'll start seeing um, the worst of it. Um, it it's, it's a bit of a um, uh, wait until, see, until it gets a bit closer in terms of the Met Service forecasting. So I, I guess that's why the general message is to make sure that you're prepared, uh, um, uh, hope for the best and prepare for the worst and um, make sure everyone's um, yeah, got the kit and the plan ready to go if, if they need to. Sure. Fill up that thermos as I keep telling our listeners here. <laughs> Just in case the power goes out, you've got a cup of it at least. Uh, yeah, yeah. where the whiskey is. Yeah, that's dead right. Now, how's the schools in your in Mana Electric? Have they all got back to uh, teachers for the kids? I know it's um, tight for some, um, so um, but I think most of the schools have done a good job of making sure that they've got a, a full roster. Um, still early days, but um, and as you know, um, Nigel, um, school roles can fluctuate uh, over the year. Um, there's usually a bit of a wash up as um, kids who might have started at one school might um, um, go to a new school in the, after the first two or three weeks. So um, what I've heard from the teach- uh, from the principals that I've spoken to um, is that everything seems to be alright at the moment. I think that the shortage of teachers is more acute a little bit further north than us, but that doesn't mean, um, mean to say that um, some schools have certainly um, found it difficult to, to fill positions, but um, I haven't heard any major rumblings, so um, no news is good news. Mm. And the roles, are they up this year compared to other years? I think that, I don't know. I, I think it might be a wee demographic thing, but I, I have heard that um, some of some of the schools that have usually struggled at this time of year, um, who have traditionally had um, a low um, roles, um, have done all right this year. I'm not sure. It's just because of a cohort of, of children that are coming through, um, especially new entrants. So um, I think that uh, is a good thing for, especially those schools um, where there are low roles, and it's difficult for them uh, to forecast how they're is going to go, but um, that's at the beginning of the year, and hopefully it, it, it sticks to that through the rest of the year too. Good. Now, as Minister of Consumer Affairs, you've been putting out a fair bit of information, uh, cracking down on unscrupulous lenders, etc. How's that going? Um, very good. There's a big piece of work um, going uh, being done by officials at MB at the moment, just to assess how some changes that were made to uh, lending rules uh, about four or five years ago are going. Uh, I'm certainly keen on uh, bringing in um, 
some interest rate caps. Uh, you'll know that there are some um, what we call loan sharks out there or some third-tier lenders who are um, charging exorbitant amounts of interest rates and fees on uh, people who borrow money. Um, so we're looking at how we can make that fairer. I, I know that some people do have to borrow money. Um, everyone does if they've got a mortgage. Um, but it's just making sure that um, the information that consumers get um, is understood by people who are taking out loans and we haven't got people who are kind of um, charging exorbitant um, uh, interest rates and, you know, I, I think ripping people off um, for lending um, small amounts of money over a short amount of time. So if we can crack down on that, I think we'll get people out of the debt spiral um, that they don't seem to be able to get, get out of, sure. um, eternally borrowing and never being able to get, get, ahead of the, get ahead of the curve. How's the housing in uh, Pararua and also, well, the general mana electorate? We've got plenty of homes at the moment for those uh, folks who need them. Uh, no, there's still quite a shortage. Um, I'm, I'm still getting a relatively steady trickle of messages of people who need homes. Um, I know, um, you know, the perception would be that it would be pr- primarily in the Potidoo area of, of the electorate, but I, I think, um, as I've said and we've spoken about in the past, Nigel, um, there is a, a shortage of social housing in Kapiti. Um, that's something that I've spoken to um, Mayor Guru about just recently, and um, certainly a lot of um, the uh, community organisations uh, in Kapiti have said that they would like to make sure that there's um, attention on Kapiti um, is somewhere that is growing uh, and that needs some uh, affordable housing um, as much as any other part of New Zealand. So I've certainly sent that message um, up the up the chain um, to Phil Twyford. So when we um, we'll, when we start kind of announcing plans around social housing, um, it's it's my intent to make sure that Carpenter is part of that plan too. I was talking to a gentleman last week on radio here about eco tiny houses that he's got out on the market now. In fact, there's one up there in, or in Wellington City uh, as a demonstration home, but apparently. They only cost about $59,000. You can get them onto a site for about $100,000. It might be something that uh, we could look at. It will house a family. Yeah, look, I've seen, I think I've seen some of those houses um, in and around the country and also on some videos that float around on uh, the internet. Um, I think um, we do have to be um, a little bit thinking out of the outside of the box in terms of um, how we get people into homes. Um, I, I would hope that that wouldn't be a long-term solution to a family's housing um, problem if they did have one. Um, but I certainly think that... Um, over time, I think expectations about housing might have to change. You know, people won't be able to buy um, their first home, might not be able to be um, the, the bedroom with three houses in a, in a large um, backyard. Um, but I do think um, that in the interim, we need to start thinking a little bit more out of the square to solve the short-term and medium-term problem around housing at the moment. Mm. Sally Army says the food banks are really being stretched. Uh, you got any problems in our area? I think if um, anyone who uh, knows the situation um, with the Kapiti Community Food Bank um, uh, and, um, wouldn't um, argue with that. Um, there, there are always people uh, and families who I think who need help. Um, I think the thing that I picked up um, from discussions um, from not just the Kapiti Food Bank but also those in the Potidoo area is that um, increasingly um, there are families who uh, are do, usually doing okay but if one thing goes wrong, um, whether the car needs a repair or the fridge is out, then yes. they do come and uh, help um, come and ask for assistance. The good thing that I um, like about um, that is, is that the the food banks in our area don't stop at handing over the food. They also also direct people or families um, to assistance about how to get through those difficult times so they aren't um, regular customers to food banks. And I think that help um, and that kind of budgetary assistance and being able to go somewhere where you might be able to get, you know, whether it be $50 or $100 uh, in the short term can actually um, help a family get through that rough couple of weeks uh, to make sure that they don't have to go back to a food bank. And I, um, I think I take my hats off, uh, hat off to those kinds of, of um, practices because it means that those families don't feel like they have to go to a, a food bank on a regular basis, which I think makes a big difference to them mm. and, uh, and their well-being. House is sitting this week, is it, Chris? Uh, yes, it is. Um, we hope that um, uh, Geeta doesn't interrupt the, the, the travel plans <laughs> of, of the MPs who are hoping to make their way here to uh, Wellington this week. But um, it is. I think we're into week two of a four-week sitting session, so it feels like um, we're back on. Good as gold. Well, I'll let you get away to practice your babysitting um, necess- necessities because I think you're going to need it in the house before long. <laughs> How do you go on changing naps? 
<laughs> I'm pretty good. I've got a seven month at home, so I'm oh, at home yeah. at the moment, uh, Nigel. So uh, I can do it with my eyes closed, which um, if I'm home, I'm trying to do as much as possible. <laughs> <laughs> good on you, Chris. Thanks for your valuable time. Thanks, Nigel. Take care. Good. Chris Farr for you. He's the Labour Mana MP, but as I say, Minister of Civil Defence. 106.3 BGFM.